Good morning and a warm welcome to you all. I am here to do a performance review of the 16 personalities who work in our office, as requested by head management. Now, I won't take up too much of your time, but please be aware that there is tea and coffee made available to you in little styrofoam cups with paddle pop stick stirrers on the table up the back, as well as an assortment of Arnott's Bickies. So moving straight along into the tiers, I'll just explain the metric that we will be using for this session. Our first tier is our Employee of the Month tier. This is our top tier. It is designed to facilitate any employee who has won the Employee of the Month award at any point during the financial year and has maintained a consistency in that performance level. And I will remind you that we do uphold a policy of just one award per worker per financial year. This of course means that there have been nine whole months of this financial year where no one has received the award, as I do not believe in giving out awards purely for participation or encouragement, despite the INFP's complaints. The next tier down is Potential. This tier is for bright employees who are trying their hardest, particularly those who manage to meet their targets for the week. Not quite employee of the month status because they don't typically work voluntary overtime or on weekends, but they get the work done with minimal complaints, so they're definitely on the rise. Our third tier is our mediocre tier. Pretty self-explanatory. Our next tier is our why are they still here tier. I'm sure none of you will be surprised to see who I end up putting in here. This category is basically for those who I believe are not particular assets to the team, being that their employment is having a generally negative effect on our profits, but HR won't let me fire them. And our final tier is our tier tier. This tier is reserved for any employee who has brought tears into the workplace, therefore disrupting my flow state and making me deeply uncomfortable. So I'll be presenting my categorization of each employee in order of where their desk is situated in the office, moving row by row from the north facing window to the south facing window. Beginning with ISFJ. Obviously, this is a simple one. Our ISFJ, Peter, one employee of the month quite early in the year. He is consistently on time, meets all of his targets, and is always willing to come in on weekends. His demure personality makes him easy to order around, and he's quite conflict averse, which is always a plus. Now, I thought it necessary to start on the positive note of the ISFJ, because I'm afraid where we'll be going next is not so positive. The ENTP employee is going straight into the why are they still here category. I have mentioned this several times in various emails, but HR is proving quite difficult to deal with. I've long noticed that the ENTP's procrastinatory tendencies, talking to others, playing online RPGs during work hours, taking multiple smoke breaks even though they don't smoke, has incrementally slowed down the workflow of other employees in the office. I do recognize that the ENTP is well loved and popular across the floor, but I do get the sense that they ironically do not have the best interests of the team and the workflow in mind. I have also become increasingly suspicious of their down with the establishment stickers, despite their direct reassurance to me that I quote, shouldn't worry. They've only put the stickers up there to remind themselves of the mentality of the enemy in order to motivate them to work even harder. End quote. Next is our ISFP. Now, the ISFP definitely has potential. But I do fear that she's so far from reaching it that she is currently mediocre at best. I've observed that although her work is decent, other employees manage to do at least 25% more work per day. So I do worry that her slow pace will slow down profits long term. And I think we can't underestimate how important a factor that is. This is, of course, irrelevant to our tier ranking because I did happen to catch her crying over a photo of a sloth the other day. So she will be the first member of our tier tier. ENFJ is next. Though I think we've all noticed ENFJ's passive aggressive modes of communication, there's no denying that his presence has been great for morale. He is always willing to take the lead on team dinners and karaoke nights, even though it is definitely not part of his job description. To address the elephant in the room, I know you're all thinking it. Yes, I did receive an email from HR on the 12th of April outlining that I, as a manager, had taken advantage of his organizational skills outside of work hours. But I was able to swiftly settle the situation by providing CCTV of the ENFJ spending over 273 work hours at the desks of other employees with a notebook on hand and his fingers in the shape of a steeple. Since then, there has been an air of tension between us, <laughs> but he's managed to meet all his targets, so I'm satisfied. For this reason, I think it's fitting that I put ENFJ in potential. Moving southward to our next row of tables, 
ESTP is unfortunately going to be put in mediocre for all the work hours that he has spent logging his overtime for extra pay, an effort that I have never seen him put into his actual work. There is of course the incident with the colony of bats, but I don't think I need to go into the details of that in order to prove my point. ISTJ does have a great deal of potential, but at this point she's not taking as much initiative as I would like her to. And by that I mean she's not sucking up to me enough. Our ENTJ is also in the potential category, because although they are extremely effective in their work, brilliant when it comes to marketing skills, and exceptionally innovative with their ideas, they keep challenging my way of doing things and I don't like it. ESTJ is a similarly hard worker, but without challenging me every five seconds, so it should come as no surprise that they have been the recipient of an Employee of the Month award. I truly believe that our ESTJ may be one of the greatest assets of this company. They show all the promise of a future leader, but they know their place. I actually had our ESTJ organize the tea and coffee station this morning. I know it's well below their qualifications, but I think I can speak for all of us when I say that it is greatly appreciated. I'm glad you know your place, Jeffrey. Moving further south to our next row, the desk right outside my office, so that I can take full advantage of her, belongs to our INFJ. Now, I truly only have positive things to say about our INFJ. A hard worker, great with people, and more than willing to go above and beyond that extra step to get us coffees. She's a yes woman, that's for sure. She has been late a few times, but I've managed to guilt her into staying back on those days. And I must say that she has a surprising ability to not let her work affect her personal life or her mental health. She has fantastic boundaries. She seems to have a greater balance than anyone I know, and that's proven by the fact that she's always wearing a smile on her face. I did happen to catch her crying when I stayed back to draw some graphs, on her night last week, but when I asked her about it she said that she'd been crying from laughter, which is just like the joyful INFJ that we all know and love. Still, it hasn't quite been enough to win her Employee of the Month, but I'm going to grant her the great honour of being put in potential. ESFP gets a swift, why are they still here label, and I think I need only point to the fact that she brought shame on this company by starting her own YouTube channel, on which she literally airs all of her grievances about every single one of us for all the world to see. I think we can all agree that YouTube is not a respectable hobby, and she needs to be spending her time doing real work. I'll leave that with the board to discern. Next is INTP. Now, INTP is an agreeable worker who certainly is no source of conflict or tension in the office, which I always appreciate, but I do sometimes wonder about, and I really don't want it to sound like I'm judging or being rude, I just literally have the best interests of the company at mind here, I do sometimes worry about the INTP's intelligence. Now we are a very respectable company, it is important that the people who work for us are respectable, intelligent, upstanding citizens, and willing to contribute to all projects. It's not just that she works slowly or occasionally misses deadlines, but she also does not contribute to brainstorming sessions or small talk with colleagues over the water cooler. This, I fear, is a grave issue. As we know, when people have ideas, they like to share their ideas with others. And when people are intelligent, they can't help but share their intelligence with others. The INTP doesn't share, so it stands to reason that she is not intelligent. For this reason, I've placed her in the mediocre category. Our ENFP. Now, she brings a certain level of chaos to the office, but I can't deny that her ideas have been game changers for us. After all, she was responsible for the idea that helped us to close a multi-million dollar deal last year. She then went on to receive multiple other job offers, but chose to stay with us for emotional reasons, which I won't deny, I have no idea what that means, but I'm not complaining. She does, however, cry every other day for one reason or another. Our example of this is on multiple of our pizza evenings where she has attempted to start an affirmation circle, which, even though I shut down immediately, results in even more passive aggressive looks from the ENFJ. So this emotional candor of hers has caused me way too many headaches to not put her in the tier tier. So having covered 75% of our employees so far, this means that we will now be moving to the final row of desks. Beginning with the far right corner, our INFP has been working exceptionally hard since we finally gave up 
and approved her multiple applications for the corner desk with the most sunlight, we were, of course, not aware at the time that her intention was to grow her family of plants in the office, but we have learned to pick our battles with the INFP. As you're all aware, we did put our foot down when she applied to have a sprinkler installed above her office, but she has nonetheless been watering her plants with her tears. So, this is right and just. Next along we have our ISTP, who has been an absolute pleasure to have in the office, especially when I'm too cheap to shell out money for IT specialists. Highly productive and competent when it comes to working alone. Very little interest in socialising, hardly complains, and would genuinely rather go hungry than eat lunch with the group. In fact, on one occasion he took an extra long lunch break to hunt for game on the office grounds. I'm sure he would have won employee of the month by now, had his consistent silence thrown into question whether he is in fact a hard worker or, quite frankly, a sociopath. Our ESFJ won employee of the month in February this year due to her diligence and her natural affinity for small talk that I can't be bothered to do with people. I have also particularly enjoyed exploiting her people-pleasing tendencies. And that of course leaves us with our final employee, the INTJ, whose desk is directly next to my office, which has seemed to provide him with ample opportunity to give me the side eye during work hours. This is often followed by an eye roll. The INTJ is a tragic case of could be employee of the month, but his multiple attempts to quit the job and go rogue have forced us to continuously throw large amounts of money at him in order to convince him to stay. We are quickly running out of tactics, however, as the INTJ has little interest in money and seems to care more about, quote, the principal, end quote. So if you'll all join me in meeting room B following this presentation, we'll be brainstorming ways to keep the INTJ under our thumb. So that's all that I've got for you today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to take a workers' rights pamphlet on your way out the door. And I strongly encourage you to do that, as I do need to tick that box with HR. Please do continue to help yourself to refreshments up the back of the room. And I'll be making sure to ask Jeffrey to move those refreshments to meeting room B shortly. See you just now. And Jeffrey, just a reminder that you will need to stay back to make up this time doing actual work after hours today. Mm -hmm.